the play! Five, I'm your Huckleberry. Eight, seven, Welcome to Fight Club. Five, First rule of Fight Club four, is three, you do not talk two, about Fight Club. One. This is Sparta! And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance You're and lying. furious anger. You're lying. I never hit you. Right. You're not telling me I gotta fight Jesse before you need to. I'm on the kids' guy. Hello. Welcome to the Real Reveal Podcast with your host, Theo. This is a movie news podcast Here's and more Johnny. with special guests. I need someone to show me my place in all this. This is a movie lovers only podcast. Enjoy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Real Reveal Podcast, episode 15 or 15, 25. My name is Theo, and I'm joined by, with a special guest, you guys know him by now, Mauricio Donoso from Movie Minders. Mauricio, introduce yourself, buddy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Mauricio from Movie Minders, and thank you so much, Theo, for having me on for this uh, interview, you could say. I think we've been talking about this for since last year. Yes, I think. yes, I we know. have, and... Uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of movie nights, and, and I'm like, you know, right, i got to right. get you on. i got to get you on and talk to you about right. your films, you know. So before we right. go ahead, guys, I just want to make sure you guys can hear me well. I want to make sure you can hear Mauricio well. Uh, so, oh, perfect, perfect. You guys can hear me well and Mauricio well. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you have any questions, please... Um, <clears throat> drop them in the live chat and you know i'll go along and i'll read a few for mauricio also um you know this is going to be a spoilered uh video so of, of mauricio's films of demon tremel and layla so i hope you guys have seen them by now if you haven't links to the films are down below go watch them support them and then come back and watch this video um because we will be spoiling a bit Mm. So, yeah. So, um, are you ready to get right into the show, Mauricio? Let's do it. Awesome, awesome. So, let me just pull this up here. So, you know, I like to, I like to um, start the uh, the Q and A a bit, a bit easy here. Um, but uh, how did you uh, come up with the name uh, Movie Minders? What's the meaning behind that? Well, okay, yeah, it's funny enough, I don't think I, I told you this story, but um, if you ever seen the movie Boogie Nights with Mark Wahlberg, th there's a part where he comes up with his name. He always says, hey, listen, you know, I have this name, and it's uh, filled with neon lights, and it just blows up. It's so catchy. So there was one day where I fell asleep, at, or I was taking a nap, and the name Movie Minder sparked. And that day, I was going to do the first trailer reaction to the channel when I was doing trailer reactions back then. And it was for Avengers Age of Ultron. And all of a sudden, I just said, hey, you know what? Originally, the, the channel was going to be called Movie Reactions. But I said that it was too, too, it was too common. Right. And a friend of mine at the time said, hey, listen, you got to come up with something more catchy. And it just kind of ringed on. I said movie minders by accident. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I've never seen Boogie Nights, but I'll definitely check That's it out. It's a good movie. And, it's 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 a really good movie. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out and and see uh, see the reference that you made there. But it's a pretty cool <laughs> yeah, yeah, name, yeah. though. I mean, movie minders. It's very catchy. I, but it it's very. It, I find it so you know how life works because. In the beginning, I was really embarrassed to say the name. Um, maybe because, uh, you know, I wasn't really, in a way, getting anywhere. Not right. like I am now, but uh, I don't know. People used to say, hey, what's your channel's name, this and that. And I used to just show them instead of saying, hey, my name is Movie Minders, you know. But right. now I'm just kind of, you know, I embrace it. I'm like, all right, this is what I'm supposed to do uh, now. That's you know? awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I remember... Um, watching your old videos i remember you used to say um you know uh you know minders unite you know and i and movie i minders unite that's yeah, right, yeah that's right and uh -huh, i always uh -huh. liked the minders part and the movie part, yeah, yeah so that's awesome yeah, yeah. Um, no that uh funny enough that 
now that Zack Snyder's Justice League's coming out, because that that was the whole premise. You're uniting a team. Yeah. That's how I thought of it when I created that's the name. That's a good idea, because, though. Like uniting a team. That's awesome. Well, no, but that's why because I realized that you know whether it's YouTuber, well, mostly YouTubers, you know, you have your specific name for your audience. And I said, if one day I'm able to create a team or people to help me out, I never want to just include myself. So, you know, when you see Movie Minders, it's not, it's Mauricio. Sure, I'm, I'm the one who created it, but it's many who created it. Like with Demon, it's, I created the thing, but if it wasn't for my DP or the colorist or, it, you know, it's, it's a team. That's the thing. And I'm like, you know what? Every sing, everybody's a Movie Minder. You know? Right, right. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, what what got you into you know making films, filmmaking, anything <clears throat> like that? What got you into it? Uh, whether it's the worst movie ever made, or it's one of the worst movies ever considered, one of the worst movies ever made. But truthfully, it's the thing that uh, you know got me started was watching for the very first time on VHS Batman and Robin. Oh, that's awesome. With a uh, Clooney. That's good. I was very little, obviously, and I was watching with my dad. I don't know what I was thinking back then, but to think that someone created a world, you know, because when I was little, I didn't know if it was good or bad. Yeah. Just looking at the filmmaking aspect, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, this is cool. It's uh, playing in a sense when you look at it, but I think. The film that truly stamped, I'm like, wow, you know, creating worlds, this and that, was Lord of the Rings. I saw that movie. I'm like, oh man, I, what is this? So wait, I'll never forget this. Um, I used to tell my mother, and it's like, hey, you know, how was it that they memorized all their lines? Because I thought a movie, like they filmed the movie in those two hours. Yeah. I didn't think it was a span of days or months. You know, it's a shot by like. They're just scenes compiled together. Right. I didn't know that. So, and she's like, no, you know, this is what they do. I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. But I never had, even back in the day, anyone to help me with it. It was more of just, hey, let me see if one day I could create something. That's you know? awesome. That's you know? good. And here we are. There we are. You, yeah. you, um, you're definitely creating something that's gonna. I hope so. I, I yeah. feel like it's gonna pass down in generations. You know, like hope so. like when you're when you have a family and you have kids, they're gonna be able to go back and look at your films or even your yeah, channel and say, "Oh my god, you know, my pop was cool." You know. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Um, does your family, speaking of, you know, family and all that stuff, does your family know you, you make films and, you know, that you have a YouTube channel? <clears throat> they, they're not on board. And I could see why. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There are moments, whether it's me starting out on YouTube uh, back in 2015. I, look, the reason I started the channel overall is because I wanted to see if, I could be able to entertain like other YouTubers, whether it's doing trailer reactions or Blu-ray trips. Um, I succeeded in in a sense uh, in in a few videos, but I knew it was it was pretty hard. But the whole purpose of the channel was to entertain until I get to my short films. Right. Um, they're not on board because they're more of you know, where's the money? How are you getting your income? This and that. So it's it's a hassle. But I'm working a day job. I work in a warehouse. And that's what's helping me take yeah. out these films. And you're making you know it saying? happen, you know. And I'm making – I have to make it happen. You know, And it's not it, – it's not because I want to make money too. It's because it's very therapeutic for me to make films. So every time you see a film of mine, um, expressing – something either what i went through or how i'm feeling whether it's the type of story that right. i'm trying to tell right um but yeah uh they're not on board i think until i show them uh like a you know this is what i did and yeah. you know, whatever the outcome is then they could say hey you know oh cool but yeah. for now i'm just on my own yeah. i have oh to, you, know? you know yeah it's it's hard 
it's hard doing something on your own, right? When you don't have your family support. I've, yes, yes. I've been very, there. Um, but, very hard. <clears throat> you know, you're right. Once you show them something, whether it is, you know, uh, you succeeding in a different way or anything like that, they're going to be like, you know, like I should have, I should have been, you know, at Mauricio's side all along. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I agree. What was the the first ever video that you ever did at the channel? By the way, I like all your introductions uh, to your films. Oh, wow. opening. Thanks. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Well, the very first video uh, on Movie Minders was in 2015. I did a reaction to the first trailer to Avengers: Age of Ultron. So that was 2015. It's crazy enough to think. That's been wow. That's been a long time. Yeah, and I was very. I think it's because you know, Avengers was big back then. I mean, it still is, but yeah. Um, when the trailer came out, I was on it real fast, and mind you, I didn't know anything about putting the video in, uh, like compiling it to you know just take. Out. I didn't know anything, but I did it on that day, and I got a lot of views for it. I mean, to me, it was a lot of views, yeah. but. I'm like, wow, people are tuning in. So then I just kept going with the flow. The objective was to upload every day, but there <laughs> there were no trailers to come out every single day. Yeah. So I I didn't know um, what to put because I was just by myself. Uh, sure, I had friends come in and out for right. certain reactions, but it was it was hard. I, I didn't you know it was just myself. I didn't know what to what yeah. to put. Looking uh, looking back now, you know, the way you started, would you yeah. ever, like, go back? To change certain things? To change certain things, but also to, to do, like, trailer reactions again and all that stuff. Uh, well, not to, not to do what I used to do before. Um, I always found enjoyment in doing them. I like it if I could entertain a few people, at least. But it wasn't my thing. I was always leading up to the short films, hopefully later on feature films. But it's, I always said to myself, I'm just trying to entertain you guys for when the stuff comes in. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So I think I got to that point because, you know, my first film was Demon in the Attic. And I think that's where I kind of said, you know what? I'm going to cut it here. Let me restart. But let me, let me, um, let me put what I actually wanted to do on the channel, you know. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a viewer here, uh, Paris Ryan, and he says, you know, okay. ask, ask him your or your favorite, what's your favorite actor? He wants to know, and then he wants me to, to tell him what's my favorite actor. My favorite, uh, my favorite actor, like in general, because I, I don't have, I don't have a favorite actor. There are many actors that i admire very much to like become an actor myself i'll give you two examples uh joaquin phoenix yeah. and robert pattinson i find the method that they use so unique because every performance that i see uh they're they're always in it you know what i'm saying they, right. they lose themselves and right. i think for me personally that's what i want so if i were to you know do a movie that I'm in or if I'm someone else's film, I want that challenge. I don't right. want to be myself, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then mm -hmm. he said, you know, Paris Ryan said, is he making a movie? He actually has three movies out. He has Demon in the Attic, Layla, and <clears throat> uh, also Tremel. And the links to those are f down below, free to watch. And please free let him watch. know what do you think of uh, his films so far, you know? So far, yeah. Yeah, this is just the beginning road. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he he follows again with "Don't let other people ruin your dreams." Both of you need to follow mm. your passions. That's true. That's the That's way very to go, true. Paris. Thank you very much for your questions, <laughs> my man. Um, there were uh, there were sorry, Theo. No problem. There were many uh, people in and out saying, "Hey, you know, it might not be worth it." This and that, and I was close to listening to them. But if I did, I wouldn't be here now. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. So uh, I'll never forget. Um, there's a movie called back in the day in 2015 called I think it was 2015 called Project Almanac. Yeah. Uh, about these, it's like a found footage film and kids go back in time. And that was my first ever review, and I did it with one of my closest friends. 
And I'm not a good speaker. So for the first time ever, I saw what, whether it's a troll or a hater, write a long paragraph of saying what was wrong with the video, this and that. And I kid you not, it was a nice learning experience because it hurt a lot. I'm like, damn, man, you took the time to write all this? Yeah, I, that's the but, thing that I, I hate about these, um, you know, trolls is they're, they're not going to say one or two things. They're going to go and right. write a full paragraph, right? Yeah. So. No, and uh, kind of like ending it off was if I were to listen to him, if I if I listened to him and he was like, oh, you should quit because, you know, you're this and that, I these films wouldn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like I'm I'm happy that it happened right. back then. And I and I totally agree with you and I agree with Paris where um you know you follow your passion you follow your dream for me right. uh you know I was I'm back on YouTube I love what I'm doing and you know and down the line I'm hoping to be able to support you know a lot of filmmakers and and follow their dream mm-hmm. you know because i right. get happy when i see that you're creating a good <laughs> passionate film right mm-hmm. and i'll support it you know so mm-hmm. yeah so um getting to the next question here and this is a, i think this is a pretty fun one and it's it's a pretty simple one um what's your okay. favorite uh soda my uh my fa- okay i'm gonna go with uh uh fanta uh the pineapple one I think that's my favorite soda. That's... Now, but I mean, I, I don't want to be cliche and say Sprite because I love Sprite. But uh, I'll, I'll go with Phantom. I'll go with Phantom Pineapple. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Mark uh, Lester is on this chat and he said Tremel. Oh, 100, nice. Tremel 100%. Um, oh, wow. Fantastic. Uh, you got to see it. Thank you so much. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Uh, do you have um, merch available? I see you're you're wearing your demon shirt. Do you have merch available? Yes. And also, can we, you know, can we buy a copy of your films to have in our collection, whether it is Blu-ray or DVD? Well, the first part about having merch, I do have a few shirts. I just make small quantities first, just to see how how they sell out or if they sell. And so far, I'm doing pretty good, which is nice. Um, uh, going to the Blu-ray things, that will actually come later in time. I just want to uh, not so much make enough films, but have some nice behind the scenes. And you know, right. if if I have more than one person, obviously, it, I would want to do more and just you know, uh, just give you a plain Blu-ray. I want right. to put a whole bunch of stuff in there so you can yeah. enjoy. That's good. Know? That's good. But later. But that's gonna be later awesome. in the future. Awesome. Keep us updated yeah. because I'll be getting. Yeah, yeah. I'll be getting a couple. So. Yeah, no, no. Um, um, I recently did a uh, uh, like a, a Facebook page of uh, Movie Minders, and that's everything that you're gonna need to know. Also, I have Instagram. Exactly, for movie that's Minders. right. All the links to that is down below. You, you know, a <laughs> click away, you can go to his Facebook, Instagram, or uh, his YouTube channel. You know, yeah, and- every everything you want to know to be updated. Like, you don't have to ask when the film's coming out or this and that. Everything is gonna be on there, and your your Facebook. I mean, it looks pretty crisp. You know, like you have oh, like your new logo. It looks awesome, man. I I wanted I, to uh, congratulate yeah. you about that. It looks good. Oh, thank you. I uh, that logo. Yeah, that's uh, that's um, that's the new one. That uh, I'm breaking my films down in phases. So. Um, if everything pans out by the end of December, we would have completed phase one of Movie Minders. Phase two, that's where the new logo comes in and brand new films come out. Um, I realized that in phase one that we're in right now, um, I've been doing mainly horror. And obviously that's because uh, it's the cheapest thing I could do as right. of now. Uh, create stories, trying to play with what I can create. But... Um, I don't want to be known as a horror director in general. Now coming phase two and onwards, I'm going to be tackling different genres. So hopefully, you know, uh, it'll, it'll range out. Awesome. You know. Awesome. We'll definitely, you know, keep us in touch with your merch and, and all that. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. For sure. For sure. So now we're going to move on to uh, demon in the attic. That's the first film sure. that, that you, ha- you ever done, right? Uh, uh 
Well, on my like myself, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So my question is, uh, why did you choose uh, the black and white effect? Uh, I love the aesthetic, and I don't think it's used that common, or if it is, it's not used as well like now because uh, uh, like the newest film of the lighthouse with Pattinson I thought that was incredible how yes. they used it and I, I thought it was really effective but um, demon in the attic like the whole premise around it is I wanted to pay an homage to the 30s of the universal monster that, movie that's awesome yeah whether it's uh, like the flying of the demon or you know just just in general I wanted that little practicality yeah. in a way I wanted to, to pay, pay that homage. And there's another story behind it of, of why I did it, but, you know. That's good, man. I, I, you know, I really, for some reason, I just like the black and white effect. I, I thought know, it was effective. Yeah, okay. I don't know what it is, right? So when I saw Demon uh, for the first time, I was like, holy shit, it's in black and white. That's a bonus right there. Um, you know, and then, yeah, no, with a lighthouse, incredible work there too. Oh yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, I loved it. it. It was really good. I happy to own it in the collection. Um, it likewise. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Maybe we yeah. can, um, do a movie night on that. That'd be fun. Um, but yeah. yeah. Um, but okay. Next thing about demon. Why did you open the scene of the, again, guys, I said it in the beginning of the video, I'm going to say it again, spoiler alert, you know? So if you haven't seen the films, links down below, <clears throat> check the films out, and then come back to this video. Why did you open uh, the scene uh, of the movie with a clock? Why did you choose to do that? Uh, just, uh... I don't know whether if... Because this wasn't intentional of... Um, having the hour as if it was early in the morning because it was supposed to show that it's 3 a.m. Right. Like, oh, you know, things are supposed to happen at that time. But that wasn't intentional. Um, I've had that clock since I was very little. My Or no, actually, my mother had it years, years ago. That's I think awesome. before I was born. So that was just, it's always little, um, um, little hints of uh, my childhood, I could say. That's good. That's good. Uh, uh, where was the movie filmed? My house. Your house. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was my house. It was my everything. Cause look, I think the po- and um, if there are any like uh, inspiring filmmakers watching or uh, even beginning um, who want to do like YouTube and stuff, with the phase one of Movie Minder Films, you could see that it's only myself. And it's my um, uh, my director of photography, also my best friend, uh, who's behind the camera. We do everything. We play the monsters. We do the voices. We I act in it. I always want to say that even though it's a challenge to do films yourself, or you know, have someone else helping you, right. it's doable. You know what I'm saying? It's there, yeah. there's no excuse for it. Whether it's a story that you really don't want to tell because it might come out cheap looking or anything. It's nice practice. Right. But, I mean, for these two films that you see, or even Tremel, I I was really impressed of what we could do. Just two of us. Right, you know? right. No, uh, and it's awesome that you got to film it in your house, right? What better way? You don't have to worry about, you know, paying to film it somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty But that cool. was it. No, but funny enough, you know, it is. It was easy because, A, it's my house. But yeah. you got to you gotta remind yourself that my folks live here. So uh, at the time when I filmed it, I wasn't working. So uh, I said, hey, listen, I, I wrote this idea down. And the way that I plan out my films is I can't draw. Uh, so I just take pictures and I started taking pictures in black and white of, you know, scenes that might occur right. in Demon in the Attic. And, um, I said, Hey, you know what? Let's give it a shot. I called up my best friend. I'm like, Hey, listen, help me film this film. And we did. And we filmed it in two days, That's awesome. two full long days, but I think it was worth it. That's awesome. What I'm going to do guys is I got Paris Ryan and he said, you know, that the link is not working for some reason. So after at the end of this show, I'm going to re edit the links and see what's going mm-hmm. on. But for now, um, to answer your question, Paris, um, I'm going to be putting the uh, Demon in the Attic on the chat here. I'm just going to drop the link right now. 
so you should be able to click on it and and you know watch yeah and it. if any and if anything too if you get the chance and you see the mini attic and you like what you see you might want to subscribe hit that notification bell because i'm telling you uh, phase one ends in december so you have two more films coming out that's awesome um so i could say that you know and if you would like to follow the facebook and everything just to keep yourself updated you know more than welcome to. for sure yes check out mm -hmm. facebook all the links are down below and i will uh, check again i don't know why the links are not working but it could be on your end too paris but i'll definitely check um how many takes was it uh the bed scene before the title cut uh i think it was two to three uh I believe it was two or three. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's good. Yeah, I believe it was two or three. Um, I really <laughs> like the uh, the demon voice, even when he says, "You know, wake up." <laughs> um, oh yeah. How how did the? Um, ooh, I think I got it here. Hang on. Uh, where the heck am I? Hang on. Sorry. Uh, who did the voices for the demon? Very cool. It was uh, Christopher Borussia, my director of photography, and yes, myself. We Chris. we linked. Yes. We linked our voices together, and uh, that's, that's pretty right. much it. Chris, shout out to you, my man. Mm. Yeah, that was pretty much it. We uh, we do the laughs. We do we do everything. We did yes. everything. And, and on your Instagram, which the link is down below, you can find that BTS of. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, uh -huh. Chris yeah. and Mauricio. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah um yeah no that that movie you know demon i can watch it anytime i never uh -huh. get bo bored of it man see you know but that's that's where it comes like in full circle for me whether to me personally i don't care i mean it would be nice if you know millions of people watch my films and all but if i just get that one person to say hey man you know i loved it i did my job whether it's entertaining or you found something in it I did my job and that that's what kind of keeps me motivated to continue on because all I need is one person just to say hey man great film or I did you can even tell me I didn't like the film then I'll right. tell you why didn't you like it don't just tell me I didn't like it just because no, yeah. no, no, no. tell me why give, Let's him, have a conversation. give him the reason that's right right yeah no because then later on I could say hey man hopefully I'll learn next time maybe I could um hopefully you like the next project you don't have to necessarily like, like this one right you know and yeah. and uh you know does does the demon does he ever haunt your dreams <laughs> <laughs> now he, that it's out you know the film <laughs> he, he not that he haunts my dreams more of he comforts them because um it was my it's my first film and i hold it so dear to me and to think that that came out of you know my brain yeah and i'm like oh wow look at that you know, and it's the you know every time i look at that poster it's oh shit you know wow we did this i came to this finally and yeah. and i did it you, you know? did it man you yeah did. yeah and uh, so that that's why it's it's super special like demon in the attic yeah. is uh, i know that it has flaws and everything but that's great i mean i love that too yeah but it, it's the first one that started it all. So it's that's one why, of those you know. movies that, you know, like it's a gloomy day out today for us here. And it's one of those movies that I would put on a gloomy day, you know, turn my lights off and kind of be immersed into this demon in the <laughs> attic world, you know? Cool. That's cool to hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Was that actually you, you coughing? Acting was well done. You know, that, oh, that where, you were um, coughing, you know, when you stand up from the bed and you're coughing like... And I take my inhaler? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah, I wasn't faking it. <laughs> no, no, yeah. That was, uh, that was a pretty bad thing on my part, but, you know, I got the shot. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that's what sounds fair, yeah, but uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. I think I did it twice only. That's it. Right, right. Uh, one of the reasons I like the film is the score. Can you tell us oh, a little yeah. bit, a little bit about that, and uh, who did the score? Well, uh, the composer's name is Jason Taylor, and I thought he did a magnificent job with the score because it truly captured what I wanted, and I wanted to pay a tribute more than anything to one of my favorite horror films in general, or of all time. Maybe it's in my top. Uh, three of all time maybe which is uh the omen 
I adore that film, but what I adore most of it is the score. It's truly one of the most haunting scores yeah. I've ever heard. Um, mind you, this is the classic one. I'm not talking about the remake one because, uh, right. sadly enough, it was a shot for shot, and I was like, nah, I wasn't a fan. But the original, directed by Richard Donner, amazing. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. So that that was the inspiration for that. And you know, when I heard the the demon score, I'm like, this is what captures it. That's I awesome. think. I love. I love it. That's awesome. Um, okay, uh, we're getting into the other question here. Those dolls were they were creepy looking. Uh, what got you to put them in the film? In what scene? Uh, in the beginning. It was yeah, in the beginning and also the, at the, the end as well. Thing? Yep. Or or the monkeys and all that. Well, I guess both both of them because you have two different types. But yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, the thing in the beginning where, you were, um, it starts to pan and you see a whole bunch of sports figures, that was actually my uh, mother's best friend. She made those by hand before I was born. So I have those in my room, and I thought it would kind of – it's not that it's creepy looking. I, I love looking at those because you know, I've had those for yeah. so many years. But I'm like, let's see if it could bring a nice little aesthetic to it. And the – the monkey and all that that you see those are those are my stuffed animals that i had since no that stuffed animal i'm sorry i lie that i got that five years ago from someone um but like the tigers and everything i've already had that since i was way little i try to use things that i already have yeah, yeah that's you know, awesome. trying to give them a little bit of meaning that's awesome uh mm -hmm. I like the effect where you know the flashlight it it shines in the in the video. Uh, what got you to do what it? Oh my god, this <laughs> this doesn't make sense. What I'm basically trying to say is there's a scene in the in the trailer, but also in the movie that you're kind of like shining the flashlight, and it goes right, right into the lens. Mm -hmm. It uh -huh. makes us feel like audiences that were in that freaking scene with you. What got oh, you into cool. doing that? Uh, that was, no, you know, here's the thing. I, uh, especially in that film overall, I wanted to put myself in if I was the actual character and, uh, cause uh, like in real life, like now I'm afraid of the dark. So I kind of imagined myself in that situation where I'm home alone, the power's out. And I have a flashlight. Apparently, my phone doesn't work. So I'm like, okay, let, let's let's take it to this. And uh, the only reason I'm afraid of the dark is because you don't know what's there. So I just played with that effect, and I just kind of did it naturally. But I liked how it looked through when I saw the f the playback. I'm like, oh, okay, that that, looks, that fits pretty nice. That's awesome. Um, yeah. How many how many filming days uh, did you guys have for uh, or did you have for Demon in the Attic? That was uh, two days. Uh, it was uh, 10 hours each day for the two days. That's good. That's good. That's wow. Yeah. That's two days with 10 hours. 10 that's hours. That's crazy. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. but that's good. Oh, yeah. You know, but, but I got to say, though, at least I'm happy that we did it because I wasn't working at the time. Yeah. If, if I was, I wouldn't have the time. Yeah. Because uh, I wouldn't have the house to myself. Right. So, you know. Not bad. Uh,. Toop, toop, toop. Why got you to put that, you know, boxing bag in the movie that we get to see in the trailer, but also in the movie? Oh, that's my punching bag. Uh, in the bag. That, yeah, because I, I just wanted because to I, use things. Because I didn't feel like it was random. Like, I didn't feel like it was thrown in there. But mm -hmm. we're kind of like, you know, we're, we're going from one scene <laughs> to the boxing scene. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I wanted to play with as if you're in your own house right you know what i'm saying so you should know what's in your house or maybe you don't so things start to appear just out of the norm i here's the thing i wanted the demon in the attic i wanted it to feel uh because i even call it uh, like in, in the title in the, in the slogan of it it's um your nightmares might become reality right. and i wanted i wanted the whole film to feel very um, obscure realistic things no not even that like huh? things shouldn't make any sense like right. th there's a scene there's a scene where uh the phone's ringing i have an old school phone and i pick it up if you could see it it's not plugged in it's you know it's placed in yeah out of it's it's it misplaced was, right 
You know, I wanted it to feel like things could happen. Right. Out of unnatural circumstances. But, but for a film, you know, for the first film, for the movie minders, I mean, that's huge. What you did... I and think it was. Yeah, it, I think it, so. it was huge. And, you know, <laughs> even... Like, I didn't really, like... Okay, like, the phone was misplaced or anything. But that didn't matter because I was enjoying this movie so much. Right? So... Oh, yeah. No, no. But um, that's what I'm... Like... If things felt out of place, that's kind of what I wanted. Right. Because, you know, the phone rings... In the film, it's not even plugged in. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, like I want to be in a nightmare. Right, right. So you know. that uh, that transaction of you walking and and you know the demon appearing at the back of you is pretty cool. Oh, okay. um, I like you know the way this was done, or even when you're picking up the phone, that's cool as well. Now, who who played the demon? What happened there? Uh, well. I played the demon for most of the time, but Christopher Barcia, who was the DP on the film, played it in a few shots as well, and that's one of the instances where he played it. Um, it's crazy enough to think that just the both of us, we did mostly everything. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's that's good. If you can, you know, <laughs> narrow it down to two people. Well, I mean, yeah, but it's also hard. Oh, yeah, because I'm sure there were, like, a couple scenes where you were filming, and then you're like, you know, Chris is like, okay, cut, 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 and then you guys have to redo it, and then he's like, well, I don't like it this way, that way, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there was a lot of those type of scenes. For this one, not really. Um, I think it just took a, a whole lot of time just to set up, because, you know, just seeing how I wanted things, but... Right, right. Um but yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, for Mark Lester, uh, did you getting pulled in the attic uh, cor choreography hurt? Oh, the choreography. Okay, so uh, I put up a, um, a bloopers video uh, on the channel. So me getting sucked in into the attic it didn't hurt because that was a reverse shot right so i was hanging off of my attic and then we just reversed it and it looks like i'm being sucked up but there's a there's a moment where i actually fall from the attic and if you see the bloopers that one did hurt oh man that i <laughs> no yeah seriously yeah i <laughs> uh, on on that uh take on the bloopers i hit the camera which is hilarious oh. but no that one did hurt but getting sucked up in the attic that was a reverse shot i was just hanging like this with my feet and then i just moved my feet and we just reversed it right right uh that scene oh where are we here uh that scene where you're you know holding the doors um it's so chilling how many t times did you guys shoot this scene and who was moving the door that was two i think that was just twice though i for the beginning takes, I tend not to do so many takes because I, I try to nail it if I say, could say so myself. Right. But uh, no, nobody was behind the door. I, I know what you're talking about when I'm running yeah, up it, uh, it, the stairs. I think it's even in the trailers where you're yeah, holding yeah, yeah. and then there's a shot of with your eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shots. Yeah. Um, no, nobody's behind the door. I'm just uh, rattling the doorknob. Right. That's, that's... I'm just rattling the doorknob. That's it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, t -t 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 that attic looked creepy as hell when you f <laughs> when you fell from the attic was that a real fall or was it a cut yeah. and if it was real did it hurt i hope that was in real blood at least oh no no no, no. The, the blood was fake that, that was fake but the fall was real obviously it was shot in two different uh two different times because uh when i fall on my face but um from me falling this way yeah that, that was a real fall and that that did hurt yeah uh i think the stupidest part about doing that because it was my idea you know i i did the film i'm afraid of heights <laughs> so you know yeah I'm a, that's stupid yeah i couldn't have done that either i'm afraid of heights too oh yeah but you gotta do anything for the film right exactly 
Um, you look like you're in so much pain when you stand up after that fall. Um, right. You know, the acting, the acting is on point here. And we believe oh. that the character is going through, um, you know, a lot of uh, pain and uh, mm -hmm. tension and, you know, to uh so yeah so uh, did you want to make us feel like that or did we just make make it feel like that when we were watching the film i hope i made you feel like that because uh you know in the span of the film in a sense in a way he goes through so much whether it's just being uh messed with i that that's kind of the word i wanted to use because i wanted the demon to play or toy with the character first because i wanted to say hey listen the demon is in charge of the house he can take you whenever you want right um but he's just messing with you so by the end when he does fall from the attic i just wanted to kind of to say hey listen you know this is it um screw it in a way you know let's let's have that final confrontation and yeah i the character looked like hell afterwards huh that's um that's awesome <clears throat> i like the sound effect of the demon uh uh who d who did you know these sound effect like i can just imagine like you know the sound effect at the end of the movie when he, your character is getting eaten up and you know all you're hearing is you're hearing that growling and that chewing and that and i'm just like ooh, like i'm getting you know yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm getting freaking <clears throat> shivers down my spine <laughs> mm -hmm. um so so that was also an attention of yours to do that wasn't it oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. for sure uh, that's good that's good mm -hmm. uh why why did you choose that ending of the dolls zooming meanwhile we're still getting that noise of oh, you know yeah. you screaming and all that like why yeah, yeah. why uh -huh. did you choose that and and you know what kind of symbol in the film does uh does the the dolls represent uh well <laughs> um since I said that I wanted the film to feel like a nightmare feel, so where anything could happen, I wanted the demon, in a sense, to have an audience. So I wanted the question if maybe there were spirits in the dolls already. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I showed the, those three dolls in my room watching over me the first time. And right. then towards the end... They're back, you know, where I am. So I just wanted that. Um, I personally maybe hey. You know. Yeah, and I personally like that ending, although it kind of leaves the oh. audience as in a, what's going to happen next. Like we, right, we know right, what right, happened yeah. to you, but like just that right, zooming right. in with the dolls, I'm like, whoa, yeah, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Um, and also, <clears> why <throat> did you, you know, why did you name the movie uh, "Demon in the Attic"? It came to me just cause. Um, like I said before, I like taking pictures, and when I started storyboarding or, you know, uh, uh, preparing, like, a shot that I wanted to see, I don't know. It just rung to me because I took a picture of the demon in the attic, and I just ha I ha had a nice ring. I was like, oh, demon in the attic. I'm like, oh, that's a very nice title. That's, I like it. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh you know the the mask it was of the demon it was you know creepy as as fucking you know can you tell us a little bit about that what uh what made you go that route with the mask of the demon to be honest uh spirit halloween is our best friends when it comes to no budget or to whatever kind of filmmaking we're doing you're even doing youtube sketches and i was just one day in spirit halloween and I saw that mask. I loved it, but I didn't have no intentions with it. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, I didn't have no intentions. But one day, I went to a friend's house, and I told him just do me a favor. And I said, "Hey, look, can you put on this mask?" And I just start. That's where I started to take the pictures. Right. And it just uh, it came to me. I said, "Hey, look, I wanna I wanna make this as yeah. a film." Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's awesome. And. 
I guess, to ramp up the demon in the attic here. Um, will we ever see a, a, a sequel or a prequel to Demon in the Attic? I want to know, or, you know, I want to know what he's up to, what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe if you're subscribed to Movie Miners with your notifications on, you might see something in reference to the first film. That's awesome. I'll say that. You, I'll say that. You heard that, guys. Go subscribe right now. I'll Watch all the films, but subscribe. And you never know. You might never know. You might be in for a treat. Yeah. You, yeah, you never know. You're, if you, I'll say this. If you're a fan of Demon in the Attic, if you truly love that film, you might be in for a treat uh, later on. Right, right. Well, I... You know, I love Demon, and, and I can't wait to see what Minders has next, you know. You're going to have to wait. For sure, man. Um, <clears throat> Tremel. I, let's get... Be, before before we get to that, yeah. just real quick, uh, I'm going to go get some more water. Sounds I'll good. be right back. Sounds good. No problem. Yep, I'll be right back. No problem. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. It's a fun show. Episode uh, 25 of the Real Reveal Podcast. Let's see, do we still have Paris in the chat? We got Mark Lester in the chat. We got Game of Player, one of my moderators um, in the chat. We got Paris in the chat. Um, how are you guys doing tonight? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good Thursday. Um, and uh, look out for more podcast episodes coming up. I got more on the way. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed already, please be sure to do that to become a, a Real Reveal fan. Um, I got lots of Real Reveal weekly podcast shows. Sometimes I do two, sometimes I do one. But um, I also do film um, videos too. And, you know, I'll have my full collection of my D or Blu-rays up really soon and steelbook and some other things and also of course tiff 2020 i finally just got my membership uh for tiff 2020 so i'll be uh selecting my movies next week and then i can keep you guys in touch how tiff 2020 will work out for me and and what i'm gonna do in the channel for tiff 2020 so definitely um you know subscribe and uh yeah and we're just waiting here for Mauricio. He should be popping in back here soon. So, yeah. It looks like he's um, fixing his posters there. Hmm. Also, guys, it's me, Billy. Go check it out. I will be putting the link down below to that. We're almost at 60,000, the goal. We need to reach that goal, and we're almost there, guys. We're almost fucking there. So we need all your help, all your support for It's, it's Me, Billy. Sorry about that. No problem. No problem. You got your water? Yes. Perfect. Yes, I'm all set. Perfect. Yep, I'm all set. Uh, so, yeah, so now we're going to move on to um, Tremel here, which is your second yeah. film. Yes. And, uh, you know, after the success of Demon in the Attic, why Tremel? Why did you choose to go with that route? Uh, to be very honest, tre so what I tend to do with, obviously, it all comes to... Me wanting to film, not as fast as possible, but I do want to film. Um, it just came because one day I was with, uh, again, the director of photography, right. uh, Christopher Barcia. We were chatting in this room uh, right here in the studio, and I st we started listening to music. Um, and I came across this piece where I saw in my head um, a... A, just someone sitting at a roundabout table and a big light shining down. And it was very sad. And I started playing with the idea 
and then later it became, oh, you know, I, I see my reflection in something, like in a mirror or something. And I just started playing out with the idea. Uh, Tremel was filmed, crazy enough to think, it was filmed in five hours. Wow. Um, the, the same day I thought of, we thought of the idea. And it was just an afterthought. I never thought, I never had in mind a film called Tremel. I, I never, it was just Demon in the Attic. And then I, I wanted to film something else. But that was months later. Um, because originally we were just going to film just a little sketch or anything, but I said, Hey, look, I, I want to do a film, a new film. And, you know, Tremel came. That's awesome. Uh, why did you, uh, choose the, the name Tremel? Um, I like the definition of, um, being held on to something because of what the mask represents. If, you know, when you see the film. I'm like, oh, okay, so we have something that right. that is attached to someone. And again, guys, I, I do like to, you know, keep bringing this up. This is spoiler video, so if you haven't seen the movies, check them out, then tune in here and see this. Um, so, yeah, starting the film like that, like the way you started it with your character, you know, chopping up, um, is very haunting. What, what got you to decide to do that opening? I wanted to. I wanted the audience to be in the shoes of just not knowing, uh, having this figure doing something. Because I know that in in the film we start to see blood gushing out and everything, and I wanted to leave that unknown until the end of the film, type of thing. Right. That's that's awesome. Uh, very cool mask of Tremel. Uh, did you make it yourself? No, that was actually Christopher Barsi's mask. Uh, he did it for, I think some, I think he was going to do it for some type of project years ago. And he just spray painted it the way that you see in the film, just because he already had it like that. He just yeah. gave it to me because he was going to throw it out. That's good. And I like, I liked, uh, the mask. And I said, Hey, you know, that'd be cool to do something with it. And then, you know, funny enough, we did. That, that, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. You know, funny enough, we did. The, the whole objective, too, it's funny because uh, the relationship that I have with him, whatever we don't use, the other person could use. Yeah. So uh, we try to reuse each other's things, which is – that's how trauma came. That's good. Crazy. That's good. I, Yeah, I know that mask. I really like it. Is it like um, – like I could tell like if I were there to touch your masks, right? Like I could mm -hmm. tell that demon is soft. I could tell for some reason I can tell that okay. tremol – is like a hard mask, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, I I could say the the demon thing was. Do, do uh, you have the tremble mask? Yeah. Okay. Of course. Yeah. All right. I got you. You still you still have all the masks. That's good. I have everything. I have everything. That's good. I got you. Hold on. I got you. Alrighty. So you guys <clears throat> will get a sneak peek look at the masks. Which one do you want to see first? Uh, we'll see the demon first. You want Demon first? Okay. Okay, here we go. So Demon's going to make an appearance then. Awesome. <sighs> That's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I, lo I, lo I love the field of the mask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be like a haunting mask right there. <laughs> That's yeah, good. Uh, this is my best friend right here. That's right. You know? And uh, I'll, I'll bring out Tremol. <laughs> Did you spray paint any of the masks? No. No. Nope. There you go. There. There it is. Mm. It looks like a theater mask, but it's good. Yes, you're becoming Tremel for the audience. <laughs> He's back. That's right. <laughs> He's back, guys. <laughs> right. Man. Uh, but uh, yeah, when when you're oh sorry. <laughs> No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, you can keep asking. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, when your character is walking, you know, at the hill and it falls, it looked like it hurt. Did it hurt? And, you know, how many yes. takes was it? Yes, it did. It did hurt like hell. Uh, no, it was just two takes. Um, this it, We used the second take. That was the good take. Because the problem with the first take is it feels like I faked it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it feels like I, I, I go slowly. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. But I redid it, and it looks like I really it seems got like, hurt. 
there's a pattern with all your films. You always either fall <laughs> or fall. something yeah, yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that 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 trend's gonna break. That trend's gonna break. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> um, how? Uh, where was Tremel filmed? My house as well. The only new location I could say was uh, the woods that I have in the backyard. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was my house again. I wanted to film. Obviously, because, you know, I don't have any other locations. I wanted to film in different areas of the house that you haven't seen in Demon before. So, like, the bathroom and uh, what else did we see? Uh, like, the shed that I have. Yeah, like, the, the mini, shed. the back. Yeah. Uh, and the woods. The, the woods. woods. And even with you when you're walking, that I think, I believe that's your backyard, right? When you're yeah, walking. Yeah. So. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh... Another good chilling score sound. Uh, when the title card pops up, really good stuff, man. I know. We got to thank the composer for it. That was a different composer. Was it? How come? Yeah. How, how come do you have like a different composers for all your sound designs? I want the film to be its own thing. So I've obviously, you know, if I were to just to have one specific composer, you know, that that's great. That's beautiful. I like. Right. I like that. <laughs> But if I have the opportunity to to get some new faces to put their own stamp on it, I think that's what I want the most. Because uh, I I wouldn't want Tremel to sound like Demon. Right on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, or it's like each film. I try to do each film. I know that the first phase is hard, yeah. but I try to do each film very differently than the last. Right. Um. So that's why I think, you know, I, I just didn't want it to have this, the same sound. I feel like I'm, I'm living the same pain as your character is. As I'm watching this movie, did you attend on doing that? Even the part when you're at the, you know, at the shed, bloody, looking, looking you know, chills. Or, no, sorry, chills down my spine. Um, yeah. And then, you know, as you're in the shed and you're bloody and you're kind of like, kind of like wiping your face off yeah there's memories just keep keep on right hitting. um right. was that all intentional like w were we the oh, viewers yeah. supposed to feel oh my god like you know he's really going through a dark path right now you know right it and i wanted to say more of that the character and the mask are two separate people you know what i'm saying so Maybe he had this mask for quite some time, and it's it's really getting to me. I you know what? Okay, I'll give you this example. It felt like I wanted to treat this character like uh, uh, David Banner and the Hulk, that kind of relationship type thing. Right. So when you take off the mask, you're trying to remember what happened and type of thing, you know, because you don't have control. Yeah, yeah, I see. You know, I see what you mean, but no, mm -hmm. good stuff, man. Uh... I like most of your camera angles in this movie, but why did you, you... got to thank Christopher Barzi yes, for that? Chris, 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 if you're watching, a shout out to you, gotta, my man, because that, that was awesome. So I guess this is a <laughs> maybe I'll save it for another time because I was going to say, I guess this is a question for Chris, but I was hmm. just going to basically just say, you know, like, why did Chris choose to have that shot of, you know, when you're when you're digging to bury the mask? have that shot that we're like watching you from your shoulders behind and then he decides to zoom in to you closer after oh yeah yeah no i that yeah, that's yeah, chris you're gonna have, that's for yeah, chris yeah you're going to have to ask him for that it's just i wanted i wanted you to be on this journey with the character yeah. type of thing it's more of what you didn't know, right. like the character as well. Yeah. You know. Well, I'll, I'm planning of for sure having Chris on here in the future, and I'll definitely I'll save that question just for Chris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, speaking of Chris, um, yeah, no, I do, I do want to shout him out. He's a good guy. He has a film mm -hmm. out right now, um, and uh, Mauricio was in it. And can you tell us a bit, a little bit about the name and the film and all that stuff, Mauricio? Uh, his film, it's on his channel. Uh, his channel is called Dark Mind Productions. And I was in a film called Witness. Witness, that's right, yeah. Witness, yes. Uh, the poster's actually in the back of Layla. Um, but that's awesome. I'll, I'll pull it out. Yeah, I'll pull it out later on. That's or if awesome. you want, I can pull it out right now. Sure, sure. Wait. 
There it is. That's awesome. There it is. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm covering No, it's okay. okay. There we, you go. Right. There it is, guys. There's Witness. Um, there really good film. And, and I had the opportunity to see it a bit earlier. And, and I was happy to do that. Uh, because really well done. You know, Chris, Chris knows his shit. Yeah. You know he your does. shit. And, I'm learning. And you, I'm learning. You guys, you know, combined and you made witness, and and that was good. And that, I, I, yeah, that was crazy. Enough, sorry to cut sorry. you off, but that that was yeah, witness. That's that's all him. And I think it was nice to. I never can. I never say that I'm an actor or anything, but it was really nice to him that he had me in mind for the, for the character, and just to see another side, not just myself. Uh, create in the creating process yeah you know with the monsters look and and all that yeah um yeah it was it was a really it's a tough experience you know hopefully if you get to interview him and all that stuff he'll tell you everything that we went through it was hell doing that but it was it was a great experience for I sure guess. i'd love to have him on and discuss yeah. about that because it's a really good film and uh I this is probably, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I was going to say something, but no, 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 no. I'm keeping my mouth shut. But if you guys want to see it, it is available, I think, on Amazon Prime, right? It's on Amazon Prime and on YouTube. Okay, so definitely go check yeah. it out, guys. Good yeah. stuff. Um, but Mark Lepster asked here, or he he um, put in the chat, that he didn't know that your films, you know, Demon, Layla, Tremel, they had posters. Yes, every single one of my films have posters. Um, also, they are available like on prints as well. I'll give you an example. Um, like for example, the twenty-four by thirty-six of Demon. That's for me, but I do have them. Uh, an eleven by seventeen on a nice size. I also have uh, Tremel as well. There it is. Yeah, I, you know, I I print these posters out. I'm gonna be hanging all over the studio and all because you know it's. Crazy enough to think that it's us doing this. Exactly. You know, it's it, and I, I, I put so much. If I were you, man, I'd look into you know making a website, selling your so posters. That, that that will come in time. I do have stuff planned for that. Uh, you know, like having the shirts and because you know, I would everything, personally everything. like, for yeah. example, you showed us that small poster of Tremel. And I would personally purchase that, and I would even purchase it for a little more to get you to sign it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh wow! So, thanks. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. But you know, um, if you were, if you wanted to do that, like just to get in contact. I mean, obviously, I know I, I have you on Instagram and all that, but uh, Facebook at Movie Minders Unite or on Instagram. Hey, man. You know, I would want to poster That's you know right. whatever i i'll always be the one to ship things out right. i look at every message i look at Exa everything exactly so, no um yeah, you're right mauricio is a type of person that even if you you know you comment on his film he'll you know he'll take that um you know that comment and he'll reply and he'll oh you know, yeah yeah he's, I like, he's not if, if i can if i can yeah, yeah he's not one of sure, those yeah. youtubers that he'll be like yeah I got a comment. I'm going to ignore it. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's huh. there. He's there. Full way. I try my best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, again, links are down below. If you're interested for, you know, a poster or a shirt or anything, hit Mauricio up on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, um, that's true. But um, Any other questions from the chat? Uh, anything, Any anything else from the chat? Let's see here. Um, Mark oh. Lester. In the future, are you going to do hour-long movies? <clears throat> Feature film times, um, I would want to say, because like I said, I want to try to break up my phases. Um, and I hope to say once we get to phase four, then we will start doing features. Yes, that that is the, the game plan. Um, but for right now, I'm using these phases for smaller projects to get more experience. So once I actually get a crew and actors and all that, you know, I, I build that, ex you know, I already have that experience. Awesome. And, uh, you know, um, I would say, you know, uh, Tremel, um, it is one of your darkest psychological that plays with oh. your mind movie. Did you choose it to be like that out of the, yes, did you? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It... Yeah. Um, but n- it, it's not like I said, oh, I want this to be that. No, no, no. It just happened to be like that because of the subject that we were dealing with. Yeah. And it's very interesting that, excuse me, that the second film, you know, if you were to compare Demon and Tremel, Tremel is the darkest out of the three films so far. Like, it's dark. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm like, wow, that's that's awesome. <laughs> I oh love yeah, that. it's it's really dark and and very yeah, psychological. Yeah. Like it does play with your mind, yeah. and you're just like, whoa, you know, this character is going through uh, so much. Um, mm. t- t- out of the three movies that you have done, uh, this this is the most dark one, uh, yeah. for sure, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, will you ever do films in the future that are as dark, if not darker? I mean, why not? It all depends, you know, it all depends also on how the script comes about. Because, like I said, all my films, whether I tell you the reason why or not, if I'm feeling something at the moment or maybe I had a bad thought, obviously I over-exaggerate with it, um... It always, it always, it has to do something with that. Right. I, for me, per, I can't just write, oh, I'm going to do, you know, whatever type of genre just because I try to put something that happened to me or, you know, something that I'm feeling right. to make it more relatable, I could say, I guess. Right. You know? Alrighty. Uh, bu- 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 that bathroom scene where you're washing off the blood. So chilling. Mm-hmm. Why did you choose to add it. that scene in? And also, how long did it take you to film? And if that mirror could have cracked, it would have made it a hundred times better than what it is. I still love <laughs> it, but it would have made it a hundred uh-huh. times better. <laughs> well, that, like I said, um, on how I was planning the film, that was the shot that I pictured. So I had to include it. And I wanted that scene to, you know, kind of, I call it the reflection scene because, you know, you're seeing what you've done or what you have to do more than anything. You know, you kind of came to realize of, oh, you know, this is what I have to do now. Um, There was, you know, since we're talking about spoilers, I'll give you this little hint. I (laughs) want, should I say it? Uh, Okay. Uh, I wanted to play around with the idea that, or you know, when the character's looking in the mirror, I, wa- I wanted to add in, in his head, some type of little cries that he hears. That's why he's washing away his pain to kind of say what we're going to see towards the end of the film. I see. But, you know, I was going back and forth with Chris on, you know, he kind of pointed out where wouldn't that give it away in a sense and i was really thinking about it i'll be honest with you if you had that scene okay i understand what chris is saying but if as you're washing away the blood or you're just washing Mm -hmm. away because you're upset or you know and we're hearing like a really 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 like you can barely hear it but a cry right yeah yeah that's like Uh fuck you know like it would like chills yeah that I wanted to do that, but, you know, it really got me thinking. I'm like, you know what? I, hmm. As much as I wanted it, trust me, I, I really wanted if you, it. If you could have um, done that and also the mirror crack, man, that would have been like a gold scene right there. Uh, well, uh, to me personally, I didn't see why the mirror shook. I mean, like, if the character was pissed, then he, you know, it'd be a little hard because I would have to break my mirror, right. <laughs> you know. Right. Um you know that that's the only tricky thing that i see with it but i didn't i didn't you know when we did it i didn't see the character pissed off i just saw him more of it's come to this because i wanted to say maybe this isn't the first time he did something you know what i'm saying right so you know um and uh you know my question is here is why do you choose um to to get your character not to have a happy ending on all your films <laughs> huh. well it's more of just the outcome of the situation more than anything seeing that tremble is the darkest and of course spoilers 
I thought of this ending to me as a happy ending because he's out of his, uh, you know, like back and forth right. with being taken over right. type of thing. And because he's done something so horrifying or he's taken something that he truly cared about that I found it a happy ending because it's like, okay, you know what? No more of this crap in, in a way. You know, it's not a happy ending, but that's how I saw it as. I'm like, okay, you know what? Everything ends here. Like, right, right. Now we're going to move on to, to Layla, your, your third uh, film here. Okay, so you go from Demon to Tremel to Layla. Why did you, uh, you know, what made you uh, do do Layla or, you know, yeah, do Layla. What made you do that? Like going from a dark psychological Tremel to a Layla that's a little bit more laid back. Yeah, yeah. I saw, okay, you know, uh, like I said before, some of the films just come about. And with Layla, if you see the environment that I was in, this was the very first time I was in these woods. I live in New Jersey. So I was near Rutgers campus, the university. Right. And I was just, was just walking around one day and I was so mind blown. I was like, look at this. This would be, uh, this looks great for a film. And I, fi we filmed it on the iPod five, uh, fifth generation. Wow. And, I mean, that's the only thing I had because I don't have any battery on my phone. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? This this is great. Let's film it something. Did, it did not look like it was filmed on an iPod or I. Oh I, yeah, that that was that was uh, edited to to the max. That's crazy. <laughs> that's like good shit. Like it just shows you guys if you want to make a film, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, camera you have. Just make the damn thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. But yeah, no, it was just. Uh, I love the look. Uh, I think we were so lucky to find that little cabin house thing that you see in the film because yeah. that was there. That was just there. Okay, so you you guys didn't build that? No, 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 no. I'm telling you, we just used the environment, and yes, it's it's a very like a cat and mouse type story, but how it came about was just. I love the look of the place, and I said, "Hey, look, let's film it. Let's just do something." Right, right. Now, uh, uh, how did you come up with a name, Layla? What does the name Layla mean? Layla is the name of the entity that pursues this character, and funny enough, Layla, the name was marked with a uh, like a crayon or a pen in one of uh, like in the cabin where i go in that's awesome it was just marked there in big letters and i just said hey layla that's I a, like that. that's awesome that's, no yeah yeah I, that's how it came. <laughs> I, I dig those things where it's like you know something happens and and that's how you yeah. stay with the name um exactly this time around, you know, you have another person on screen with you to share. How was it having somebody uh, to to share, you know, somebody to share with in the movie? Yes, the actor's name is Ray Garvin. And, you know, I loved it because when you truly look at it, Demon in the Attic was a story of one person and, you know, what he might be afraid of, right? right. You know, having that obscure thing, tremble, psychological. You're just like, oh, you know, you're by yourself. Or my films, in a sense, in a way, they're never alone. I'm just not by myself. I have a creature or something, right. you know, whether it's a demon or a mask. Now here, yes, it's a little spirit. But getting to add another actor in a different I wanted to play it off if it was a different time period because I never shared the screen with him. Um, it's really refreshing because I want you guys to see that there's an evolution happening, a progress with each film. Right. You saw me. Now you get to see me sharing, um, not even sharing the, the sharing the same screen with someone because that hasn't come yet. But someone else, a new face is in the film. Yeah. 
I want you to see step by step. I'm getting new people involved. Later on, it's going to be more and more, you know, that type right, of thing. Right. Why did you mm -hmm. choose that opening of the film? Like that opening with the the actor there. Uh, yeah, we call him we call him the summoner. The summoner. And yeah, the summoner. And that came months later. At you know, after we shot my stuff. I liked the film, but I said I wanted to add more. I wanted to add a why. And, you know, if I if I got my point across, I wanted him to prevent Layla from coming out. Obviously, she takes over the forest. Right. That's her home. Um, you know, and if you see the film, you know, he doesn't succeed. Right. But um, I, I wanted to play with that idea. What, what made you tell a story of a haunted, a haunted forest? Just by looking at the the forest that I was in, that that's how it came about. You know, uh, with Layla, I can't really say, oh, I planned everything. The only thing I could say I planned was the opening act. Right. But the rest of my like the scenes, the whole thing where I'm in at the last act, that was I got to say that was all improvised. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy to think because we filmed that in two hours, my my stuff, and then months later we went back and we did the opening. That's awesome. Um, in this film, what was your favorite scene, and also what was your favorite scene in Tremel? And I don't even think we covered Demon. So let's say all your films. Like, what was your favorite scenes? I know I'm I'm throwing random <laughs> questions. No, no, no. At you. This is this is this is good to think. Um, for demon, a favorite scene or a favorite shot? A favorite, I guess both. Yes, yeah, scene and shot. Well, a favorite shot would be uh, when I'm struggling to hold the door and you just get a visual of my eyes. Right. In demon, that's a favorite shot. Right. Um. To be honest, I don't have a favorite scene of Demon because I love the whole thing. I consider it one whole That's thing. Good. Tremel is a different thing. I love the reflection scene where you know I wipe off the blood, or um, and I think Chris did a wonderful job with this in the beginning where I'm done chopping up whatever it is I'm chopping up, and I start to walk like a zombie, and it just has this nice medium shot and then of, of my course face. The score is what adds into everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Layla, uh, I would say the beginning with the summoner, the yeah. whole act, because uh, it was something, you know, it was something new getting to work with an actor and right. giving him, telling him what to do and all, yeah. giving him directions, kind of seeing how that plays out. Yeah. But I got to say, if it was my things, I would say uh, the, the, the shot where I get possessed, like the purple yeah. all around me and all that. I, I like that scene. Yeah, yeah. What camera did you use for all of your films? For Demon in the Attic and Tremel, I used a, a, a Rebel T5. It's a DSLR, a Rebel yep. T5. And for Layla, I used the iPod 5th generation. That's awesome. That's, that's good, though. I mean, I, I forgot what movie did that. There was a Hollywood movie that you... Oh, Unsane? Yeah. Yeah, that's all. I haven't mind seen you, it yet. That, mind you, that you're using iPhone. We used an iPod. That's even better. That's even better. But no, yeah. I haven't seen Unseen yet. But I, I, I haven't either. Yeah, haven't but either. no, I, I find it interesting, fascinating how you can film from from a little device like even mine, right? Like it's pretty cool, mm -hmm. you know. Oh yeah. Um, a very chill, chilling scene is. Uh, you know, your actor is getting killed by a tree branch. How how many times did you guys film that scene? And how was it, like, was it hard to show? Like, how did you make it look like he was killed by the branch, you know? Uh, no, that was twice. And that... It, it all has to do just with playing with the effects on how we kind of... Uh, went with right you know, it was just acting like you got stabbed by a branch that's, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it that's yeah no when i saw it i was like i was not expecting that i was like oh no he was gone <laughs> just like that um but it would have been interesting though i mean i you know i know the film is already done and everything but it would have been interesting right. if your character could have found him 
You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Um, but the thing with that is um, it's supposed to be in different time periods. That's what I was trying ah, to go for. Uh, yeah, that's why. Because that's uh, why like when you, we, you, you write down there's a little thing. Present day. Right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. That's uh -huh. right. Exactly. It makes yeah. sense. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Again, bravo on on the score. This film and all your films, it really adds the mood and the cinematography. Chris, you killed it, buddy. <laughs> um, I really like I really like the font of Layla. Uh, what got you to go with the purple? Like, why why was the 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 purple the whole thing of Layla? Even when you're getting yeah, yeah. possessed. Yeah. Uh. It's one of my favorite colors. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Ah, and that's awesome. I, I, yeah, I thought it had a nice aesthetic to it. Um, pretty much, that that's the only reason why. That's know? awesome. I would have thought your favorite color is red because your old logo, it was red, and I would have thought it was uh, red, your favorite color. Not red. Um, burgundy. Burgundy? A wineish color. Yes, that's that's pretty cool. No, that, that, that title yeah. card with uh, the purple and the demon or the demon, the 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 thing that's getting you possessed. That's purple as well. Those two things, they were good. They were good. Oh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really explain why your character wanted to go to that forest. Why did he right. end up going there? Would you have an answer for this, for that one? It was just the way that I saw it. It was the wrong place at the wrong time. He was just taking a walk, and he just stumbles across this uh, untitled forest. Yeah, and and that's how I saw. It. That's yeah. how I saw. It. Because no, I used that experience of that was my first time literally being in that forest. That's how I kind of saw it. As, you that's know? awesome. And uh, you guys can, you know, of course, you can see Mauricio here, and you can see the. Uh, the poster there. That's my favorite shot of. Oh, I thought he. Did, I thought Chris did great with that. That, that yeah. is. That's actually not even the poster, yeah. but also the film. Like it's in the film. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's my favorite yeah. shot right there yeah, of the movie. I, I, he did great with that mm -hmm. because the, it great. shows how. It shows like it shows how the trees are so tall, but it also shows that you looked from the back of it. Of course, we can't see your face, but from the back of it, you look like holy shit! What am I facing? You know what no, I mean? But that, yeah, that was my first reaction too when I went into that forest. I was so amazed. I'm like, look at this! This is so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really like the the shot of the of you walking into the forest. How long was that? The entire filming of the movie. Like, how long did it take you guys to to uh, film the whole thing? So, but by the whole thing, I would say for my part, which was two hours. Once we did that, uh, we saw the completed version. Right. And I said, listen, you know, this, it's not that it feels short, but it feels like it's missing something. Yeah. So that's why months later, maybe four months later, um, we got in touch with the actor and I came up with the beginning. That's good, man. And we, we did it. We that's did the good. beginning. That's good. No, I, those shots in, in the forest where you're walking around, the pretty cool stuff right there. Mm -hmm. um again again and keep in mind i've i've been seeing that for a while now but again you're running in the woods <laughs> the score is oh, yeah. picking up and it's awesome it focuses on those glasses when you fall right. you know there's you and then there's those glasses did it mm -hmm. hurt when you fell and also um, you know, th those glasses are so cool. Um, you know, why why did you want to look into, like, what made you uh, have those glasses as a symbol, I guess, right? Uh, I mean, yes and no. I'll go with the first question of, uh, did the fall hurt? Yes, it did. But I did it twice. But the first take, kind of like what happened with Tremel. In Tremel, I was afraid to fall, that I was actually going to get hurt. Right. And in this one, I improvised that fall. Right. Uh, the first, the very first take, what happens is I grab the sunglasses and I drop them. But when you see, it looks like I, I fake drop yeah. them. It didn't look it natural. Didn't look real. So what happens is, 
Right. So what happens is I hear action and I just start running and I fell. I busted my ass. Oh, but man. Um, I, I wanted that. Oh, you know, you could fall. Oh yeah. There's there's a trend. I'm telling you, Mauricio. There's a trend with Demon huh. Tremble and Layla. But I break that trend in uh, the next film. All right. All right. Um. When did you film Layla, Demon, and Tremel? And out of all the filming days of the movies, what one was your favorite one, but also the hardest to film? Okay. Uh... I'm sorry, what was your first question? Uh, How many days did each film take? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, like, what what season was it? Like, was it, like, October, November? Oh, no. So, so Demon was uh, the winter. It was in Jan... We filmed it in January of last year. Yeah. Uh, Tremel was in March. In March, I believe. Yeah. And uh, Layla was in July of last year. And... Uh, my favorite day of shooting on either films, I'll say Demon in the Attic. Demon. Yeah. But the hardest to film, I would say Tremel. And the only reason I say that is because we were on a, on a time limit. I had five hours to film because my stepdad was going to come home. My mother was in the house already when I was filming the end scene, when I shoot myself. Right. Um... So that was the only reason because I said, hey, let, let, we're at the final act. My stepdad's about to come in and we won't be able to film because then the TV's going to be on, right, this and right. that. And that was the hardest filming Tremble. The very last scene was very hard. Right. And plus, too, I had to get into an emotional state because right. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to kill myself, this and that. I'm like, ah, oh, man. So it, that was the hardest. Out of the three films, yeah. Tremble was the it, hardest. It, to film but my favorite days of shooting was uh demon. that's good that's good uh yeah no and it was and i could say the demon was challenging because of uh the long hours that we did right right now if you were to you know have a marathon right if if a viewer is watching now and and they want to have a marathon what would what do you recommend them demon tremel and layla or layla tremel and demon or what would mm -hmm. you recommend it depends on the mood that you're in. So if you wanted to go with something very fast-paced, I would say Layla. Watch Layla first. Then watch then watch Demon. And then Tremel. Right. The only reason I leave Tremel last is because it is the darkest out of the three. Yeah. Um, but if you were to say, hey, which one's your favorite? If I were to rank my films, it would go... Demon, Tremble, Layla. The right, same order right. that they came With, with me, you know, I love Demon. And I can watch mm -hmm. it at any time. But if it's a gloomy day out like today, where it's going to rain, I, I prefer mm -hmm. having uh, having to see that movie then because it kind of puts me in the mood for that, right? Okay. So that, at least that's how I feel about it. Um, but yeah. Right. Um, that's a cool effect. Going back to, um, Layla there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's a cool effect of the, the spirit flying into you. How was it like yes. acting, being, you know, acting, being possessed? And I see in the, in the bloopers, you were, there, <laughs> there was a scene that you were laughing kind of, and yeah, yeah. How was it? Please tell well, us. Well, yeah, because, um, not getting possessed at all. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretending I am. If you, you were, the bloopers you were aren't on my like, channel, uh, like you were like rolling your, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was trying to get into it. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. I realized that in every single film, even like the the Hollywood yeah. films and all, whether when it comes to effects, you have to be a kid right. and play with your. Right. yeah no 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 but but seeing you know, seeing yeah. those bloopers i was like holy shit yeah, yeah. man like that's that, that was crazy you know dude i you know i feel stupid at times i always but... find bloopers fun i always do you know oh yeah no no me too for sure but what i'm trying to say is i feel stupid when i have to do something like that but in the end you have to say to yourself, oh, there's going to be something else added in. It's not like you're just doing this and that's it. Right, right. 
you know. No, it mm-hmm. was it was fun seeing and like um, I would you know I saw Demon and then I saw the bloopers and you kind of you it feels like you're behind the scenes and that and that's just me when I watch a film. I always <clears throat> like to watch the bloopers, and I always like to watch behind the scenes because I find it very fascinating. Oh yeah, I do too. That's that's what got me inspired to become a filmmaker too. I watch on every single film if they have behind the scenes, I watch it. I watch the interviews. I because that's the profession I want to be in. Right, right. You know? Um, but, 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 but let's see here. What was your favorite? Uh, we already answered that. Uh, it is a future. Okay, what is the future for Movie Minders? When will you be releasing the next film of the Movie Minders chapter? And can you tell us um, what it might be about? Maybe. So what's gonna happen uh, going forward? You guys are gonna have two more films by the end of the year. Hopefully, if everything goes well, uh, the release dates will be in October and December. That will be the end of Phase 1. Then we jump into Phase 2 with a brand new logo, a brand new everything. You guys are going to see new faces. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, a bigger scale of production. Um, for the next film, I could say that... I will be sharing the screen with someone for the very first time, which is very exciting. That's awesome. Because this is going to be the first dialogue film. Right. We're going to hear, you know, in the in these three films, we ha- uh, we don't hear anybody talk. Right. Well, but now we, in do, this we one, do hear you a bit in tremor, but yeah. Yes, but I mean... I know what you mean. Yes, yeah. that's true. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to be sharing the screen with someone. Right. So that's very exciting. Right. Um, for you to see new faces. Yeah. Um, to for the channel to grow also right. you know what i'm saying now yeah. you're hoping by december you're done with your phase one phase right. two is that gonna f- focus on horror or are you doing comedy or no what you... no so i want to do everything i want to do all genres um of course i'm still gonna do horror right but that comes in time because now I'm going to explore different things. I, you know, it, like I said earlier, I don't want to be just a hard director. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, right. I want to do, try, try and do everything. So, phase two, you're gonna see, uh, and you know, different different films. Yeah, and will we see uh, Chris return? Be uh, as director of photography? Yeah. Yes, yes. Awesome, okay. awesome. Because I do like his work, and he puts I that spark work. in movie minders, he does. right? He does. He's the... yo. Know, let me. I'm telling you, I always give him enough, uh, a lot of credit for this. But if it wasn't for him, trust me, it you know, movie minders wouldn't have been what it is if it wasn't yeah. for his eye. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And now that we're talking about Chris, like, t- if you can tell us a story, like, how did you meet Chris? Because oh, that's you funny. met. I I believe you met Chris <laughs> around the same time as you started movie minders. No, 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 no. no. I met I met him uh, 2018. 2018, I believe. Uh, no, it was just nice. the, yeah. It's uh, we had a mutual friend, and this mutual friend always kept saying, "Hey, listen, you know, I know this person that's in films and this and that, and you should you should link up." And I'm like, "All right, man, let's go." You know, I want someone new because, yeah. mind you, I was only by myself, right. and I didn't have the experience. I don't have the experience, and it went on for months. Right. Oh, yo, you should meet this guy and everything. But uh, in the end, Chris wrote to me uh, because he kind of just gave up. He's like, all right, you know, let me just write this kid and we'll go from there. And I I got back to him that very next day uh, or like in a few hours. And we just started chatting. He said one day, hey, let's link up. And we did. And then we hit it off from there. Everything's history back then. That's awesome. And there's history. And I guess that might lead us into the next question here. Um, but, uh, who created your, your thumbnails for your films very well, eye catching onto the point. That's, that's Chris as well. That's, that's all I'm, mm-hmm. he did good. Especially my favorite one out of the three thumbnails, Layla. 
I don't know what really? it is. I don't know what really? it is, but it, it's definitely very eye catching. For me, for me, it's Demon because that that my favorite shot is in in the thumbnail. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Well, Demon is good too, but yeah, yeah, Layla, that was something funky going on there. You know, really? I like how I said funky. <laughs> huh. But uh, yeah, I see you're you're doing uh, Movie Minder stream nights. Are your are your plans to do that more in the future? Yes. Um, obviously I haven't done one in a month now, but right. I'm, I'm trying to get everything settled. Um, but yes, that, that is because I want to interact with the fans. I, right. I thought it's, it's a nice idea just to do some nice watch along. Right. Or even just Q and A's. That's fun too. Right. Right. Hopefully late, you know, later on, if, if people are interested in, I'll do it for sure. For sure. Um, but dum but dum but dum. Um, I really am, and I don't know if you get this often, but I really am also a fan of your uh, movie skits. How was it filming the uh, Halloween skit? And uh, yeah, how was it that, filming it? That was such a pain um, because that was in the middle of winter. That was cold, oh. and I u- yeah I used to do skits. Um, yeah. I don't do them now, but they were fun. Halloween was very well, challenging. Would you ever? Sorry that I interrupted. No, okay. Would you ever do skits again? Because I really want you to do a Walking Phoenix Joker skit. Oh, uh, speaking of, you know, yeah, I'll say that skit of uh, the that Walking Phoenix Joker is in plans, but you know. Because your skits my, are awesome, man. <laughs> thank you. My my main focus, obviously, is my films. But uh, that skit, I do want to do. And I want to do one more. But right now, I'm just focusing on my films. Because, you know, those yeah. take up a lot of time. Right. Um, uh, I wouldn't count on it. Like, I wouldn't get your hopes up. But yeah. I wouldn't say no. You know what I'm I, they're fun, you know. They're outside yeah. of your films and outside of your stream right. nights. Your skits are fun, you know, <laughs> fun too. Um, kind of uh, like to finish off though that Halloween thing. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, it was in the middle of winter, and the problem with that was we were filming in a parking lot outside of a mall, and everything was closed. So you know, we had security just patrolling us here and there. Right. We filmed that in two nights. Uh, huh. It was very cold. It was very cold. That's crazy. But we got and it I done. think that I believe the video is still up at the channel, right? Negative. Uh it's uh unlisted right now. Oh. Yeah, okay. I it, here's because like I said before, I wanted to strictly have just the films on. I get if I get to have my live streams like the watch alongs, uh you know, when I get to do them again. Um but other than that, I really didn't want to have other things derailing the channel type right. of thing. Oh. Right. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure if, you know, they could see it, maybe, if it's unlisted, but I don't know. Um, bu- 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 my, favorite, my favorite skit of yours is the Black Mass one. That takes me way mm. back in the 2015 days. Yes. Well done. You know, well, you know it, it was fun. The Black Mass, you were writing the character. And speaking of Black Mass, I, I own the film, and damn, I haven't seen it in so long. And... <laughs> That skit, I watched it the other day, and it made me uh, revisit Black Mass for sure. Funny enough, though, um, little inside, when I made that skit, I've never seen the film. Because, obviously, oh. when the when the trailer came out, that I was just trying to reenact it. Right. But it's not until a few months ago, I recently saw Black Mask. <laughs> huh. That's yeah, awesome. I haven't seen the film, and I just reenacted it. Because I... Lo- Here's the thing. Now watching the film, I loved what Johnny Depp did with the character. Even though yes. I'm not a Johnny Depp fan, I really believed his character. I, I loved what he did with it. So yes. looking back now at the skit, I'm like, oh, okay. I, I like it. It came out that's pretty awesome. cool. That's awesome. No, that's my favorite one. And I revisited it the other day and I was watching it. And, and um, it made me realize, holy jumping, I haven't seen Black Mass for a long time. Um, mm-hmm. And also your your skit. That's another fun one. Your it skit where you're dressed up as the clown. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a, 
That's an yeah, old that's one. a pretty fun one. That that uh-huh. takes me back to the uh, the Minder days. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Will Will you? And that I guess that leads up to our next one. Will you ever bring old? I mean old. When I mean old, I'm talking about like 2015 movie minders back. Will you ever do that? Uh, I would say an official no. Okay. Or you never know. I'm not talking um, about the trailer reactions. I mean, everybody does those. Right, right. I'm Just, talking about, yeah. for some reason, like, if I want, like, vi- like old movie minders, I miss the days where you would be like, hey, guys, you know, I'm here at Best Buy. I'm going to pick up this thing. You know, let's right. have fun. Let's talk about movies. You know what I mean? Uh. The only reason I would say an official no is because I would use that energy to uh, put on my live streams or even like interviews that I'm going to be doing like little here behind the scenes. I want to bring that energy to the newer videos. I'm not trying to look back anymore. Right, right. And sometimes that's the best thing, not looking. Right. Um, right. But no, I, um, yeah, I remember you were in the car and you're like, you know, I'm going to go and pick up this movie today and, you know. I like oh, that. yeah. <laughs> that's, but it also gets pricey. I mean, you know, the only time I would do a video like that is if I'm like picking up the film, but it, it's so pricey, you know. Oh yeah, every Tuesday, Jesus. Um, what is what is your biggest pet peeve when watching a movie? Uh, like in theaters? Yeah, like if in theaters or e- even at home. I mean, but you can tell me both. But uh, yeah, yeah. Give me an example of a pet peeve. Uh, like for example, um, uh, with me, my biggest pet peeve is when I'm in the theater and I have people talking oh, or okay. they're on their phone <laughs> or you know. Okay. Uh. If I haven't seen, if I'm, if a new film comes out, and I'm desperately wanting to see it, don't talk to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even if if I go with a friend. Funny enough Sorry that. Sorry that I interrupt. So friends, that so that means no, no. that when you watch the Snyder cut at your big screen at home, nobody, not even your own mother, nobody can interrupt you. <laughs> don't That's talk to right. me. Don't fucking talk to me. You're getting That's kicked right. out. Plain and simple. Plain I'm the and same simple. way. Plain and simple. Yeah. And it, it's not that I'm trying to like be rude or anything, but if I'm seeing the film for the first time, I want to experience it like it's the first time. Right. Um, now, you know, mind you, if I'm going to rewatch a film and you're like, oh, hey, man, you know, this and that, whatever, I'm like, okay, that's cool then. Yeah. No problem. Talk to me. But if it's new, I'm like, shut up. Please, I'm trying to enjoy it myself. Right, right. Um, yeah, no, no, that's my biggest pet peeve too. When somebody's trying to talk or they're on their phone or uh, just like yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I guess that's my final. Um, that was my final uh, question that I had for you. But before we turn into the chat, you know, if you guys have any questions, let them, uh, let them. Drop them down below for uh, Mauricio, and uh, I'll I'll tell them to him, and you know he'll answer them. But yeah, for I, sure, anything you would like to know. I was um, actually the first time I saw Inception was at the theater last week. Nice. Such a good movie. Such yeah, a good that's movie, cool. and uh, I'm looking forward to Tenant this weekend. That's Lucky awesome. you gonna be fun i i know you guys can't get tenant because till yeah, september right no. that's what they're but saying that's, that's because Hopefully. of the uh that's that's because of what's going on now what's gonna happen yeah. if let's say you know we're seeing tenant in canada early this weekend but let's say we get into another lockdown what's gonna happen with you guys or the rest of the world that's gonna suck that's gonna. That's the. I can just see right them there. putting a rate right on VOD. <laughs> It'd be like, hey. You know, I mean, like hey, the, but you know, of the wor- it, it would suck. Right. It would suck, but I mean, you know, yeah. I guess you could say we're safe at right. least. Right. Right. 
So, mm -hmm. yeah, so we're going to turn into the chat now and see if we got any questions for you. Um, I don't see anything, but that's okay. Um, but, um, yeah, no problem. No, I can't. I'd like to do another movie night with you. Um, that, those are, yeah, fun. we just have to, we just have to schedule it kind of like how we'd been doing before. Cause usually I, I come home from work very yeah. tired, like how I am now, yeah. but, um, I always try to make it work for sure. I'd, I'd love to, to, uh, do them again because, uh, you know, Justin, he's, he's right now. He's like going flying to places and seeing a bit of the world so he can't do movie <laughs> nights with me so and you know you're fun you're fun to do and, uh, and oh, i thanks. would love to do the lighthouse and suicide squad and all that stuff so we'll hopefully we'll have something planned in mind but yeah no guys if yeah if you sure. have anything to ask either demon tremel questions or or layla or just anything in general for movie minders please do so um, before we leave the live stream here, but uh, yeah, yeah, anything at all. It can be anything. It can be like you know, Mauricio. What's your favorite uh, movie snack? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that that's for sure. Or it can be sure. like. By the way, it's uh, it's uh, if it was a movie snack, I'll say a uh, crunch. Right. Yeah, that's crunch, good. I like crunch. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, crunch is. It's okay for me. I like, I don't know, like gummy bears or, or you know, Sour okay. Patch Kids or when mm -hmm, I'm watching mm -hmm. a movie. Or sometimes I'll get into the Kit Kat or Coffee Crisp or Kit Kat. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a good thing like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah. Now, uh, so far, what's your favorite um, movie of of this year i mean i know we haven't gotten a lot of movies but we haven't gotten much but i would say i'd say bad boys for life yeah. just because it's action um, i think that was the last, last year saw... wasn't it bad boys oh no no that's this year it was this, this year. year yeah you're right i would say um because it, this was the last movie I saw in theaters. I, I had a really fun time with The Invisible Man. Have you? Yeah, no, I, I liked The Invisible I, like, Man. That was the last movie that I saw in theaters before, of course, the pandemic. Yeah, same, same. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's, it, it felt good going back. It really did. I, I had a fun time, and I'm looking forward to Tenant. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I mean, it's a strange place, strange place. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think that's going to cut it. I mean, we're close to two hours here. So yeah. it was a lot of fun. It was fun having you on for uh, episode 25. It was a special episode yeah. with with you on here. And uh, hopefully I'll get to have you soon again. I want to have you on Most at definitely. least before the end of December um, to talk about your other two films. But if not, I mean, I can yes. I can always yes. have you on in the new year. Um, but either yeah. or yeah, for sure. sure. But anything you want to say or plug yourself out before we go? Uh, no, just yeah, like I said before, if you guys would like to tune into what Movie Miners is going to do, uh, just hit me up on Facebook at Movie Miners Unite or on Instagram. It's just at Movie Miners. You'll get to see all the behind the scenes, the making of interviews, um, or just the progress in general of uh, when we're going to be doing some new films, things like that. It's more than anything, and I get to say thank you so much, Theo, for having me. You know, on this interview, I know that we've been I, trying to do it, this for it, quite it was some time. Fun. It was fun having you. Yeah, it was very fun. Yeah, it was very fun. And, um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I had a blast there. For sure, this. it was a lot of fun, and mm -hmm. thankfully there was no any difficulties. Right. So right. it was mm -hmm. it was really good. Um, but as of me, guys, um. I will be getting my Blu-ray collection video out in September. That is the goal. Um, also, I just got my membership for TIFF 2020 all this week. So next week, I'll be getting uh, the movies. I'll be selecting what I'll be seeing. Um, and I'll let you guys know on a show. And it'll be a little bit different this year because I'm doing TIFF. Uh, at home online this year so i'll oh, be wow. they'll be doing a zoom conference um where they'll be having like the actors answering questions and all that stuff mm -hmm. um but they're, they're oh, also wow. gonna be showing the movies right so so my plan this year is 
seeing the film, getting the review out, whether it is live into this podcast or just filming. But uh, I know you guys want to see film content. I've been doing way too much live lately. <laughs> I, I just find it so easy, you know. You don't have to worry about editing mm -hmm. or anything like that. It just right, right. It just goes up. Um, but yeah, no, that's the plan. Uh, September will be really busy with that, with TIFF and my Blu-ray collection and Steelbook collection will go down the line. And as you can see behind me here, um, I finally got the, um, uh, oh, there it is right here. Um, finally got the, uh, mid sumoir or summer, um, director's cut digibook. So I'm really, um, happy to, to own that in the collection. And I'm going to be watching the director's cut. I'm hoping tomorrow. For the first time, oh, wow. so mm -hmm. I always love director's cuts. I don't know why. I guess I guess it makes the film a little longer, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so yeah no but uh, yeah before we wrap this thing up, anything you want to say? No, just thank you so much for having me. No problem. It was a lot of fun, and I'll you'll probably see Mauricio again back. We'll be doing another movie night. Uh, very yeah. soon and also the links are down below to Mauricio I know earlier Paris Ryan was saying that the link wasn't working so I'm, I am going to double check and see and if it's not I'm going to fix what link is not working but all the links are down below for all the films Demon, Tremor, Layla um, and also um, you know facebook and instagram and youtube and subscribe hit that bell button and also if you have yep. no i saw you in the chat there you go movie miners <laughs> with a new logo so yeah also um too the only reason why i'm trying to plug the facebook and instagram if anybody would ever just just if so would want a t-shirt of any of the films that are coming out or even posters I think yeah, that's the, a, you know, doing that's that's a good idea. I mean, I like that idea that they can hit you up, but I think the best is, and you know, we'll talk if you want to after the stream is doing it all on a website and telling, right. making a video and tell them, hey, if you want merch, you know, down below is the link, or when you make videos, down below is the link. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the best way. That 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 that's definitely gonna come in time though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure, buddy. Um, but. Yeah, guys, um, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do that to become a Real Reveal podcast fan or just a Real Reveal fan. Um, I haven't said that for a long time, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, no, thank you again for watching. I do appreciate it. And if you enjoy these videos, give it a thumbs up, share it around. Go and check out Have a Movie Minders Marathon right now. All three mm. films are available <laughs> to watch for free. And you don't even have to pay a dime. All you have to do is just write a review underneath, letting movie minders know what did you think of it. Yeah, later on, too. Um, the films will be available on Amazon Prime. That's coming soon. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's coming soon. You know what would be yeah. fun um, doing, a, um, doing a movie night um, where we, we watch all of your – all of your films like your three films <laughs> and doing uh -huh. a reaction on them like that would be fun <laughs> but uh i mean if you would want to do it for the phase one films sure <laughs> hey I'll, I'll wait for those two more and we'll get yeah, we'll get sure. you on and we'll get the director's uh first well, commentary, commentary on it as well so it'll be interesting it'll be yeah. the director's cut <laughs> but <laughs> But yeah, no, thank you guys again for watching. Truly fun. And um, thank you, yeah. Mauricio, for being here and making oh, this video so possible, much. man. You're you're the man, and I'll see you at the movie night. But yeah, and I'll see you guys next yeah. week for the Real Reveal podcast episode 26, where we'll be talking about TIFF 2020, I think. I hope. Um, but yeah, no, this has been the Real Reveal podcast episode 25, and I'll see you guys soon. Have a good night, guys. Stay right, safe out there. That's true.